Hello Think Keto family, welcome back. Today we're making a low carb hot fudge. If this is your first time with us, don't forget, hit the subscribe button below and the bell icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. Let's get started guys. All right guys and gals, so as always, everything I'm using today is gonna to be listed down in the description below. And that at the end of the video will be a nutritional information card so you know what macro breakdown for this is. All right, let's get started. All right, guys and gals, so I already have a saucepan heated up over medium heat here. And to that, I'm gonna add a, a stick of salted butter. I know usually I'm using unsalted, but today it's salted. All right, I'm gonna let that melt down. All right, and to that butter, I'm gonna go ahead and add four ounces of chocolate. What I have here is I have about two and a half ounces of Lily's extra dark chocolate, but it's a 70% dark chocolate. And then the other one and a half ounces or so, I went ahead and I put in some 100% unsweetened dark chocolate. Because that by itself can be a little bit on the strong side. So I thought by diluting it down with the Lily's, it would kind of help keep it from becoming too bitter on me. But you can use whatever you want. It's just four ounces of unsweetened chocolate. So however you want to mix and match that up. Experiment, go crazy. Let me know what you do and what works out well. Or if you experiment and what didn't work out, so I know not to try it. So we're just going to keep this moving. We don't want it to burn, but we do want it to melt. So definitely make sure your heat is not too high here because burnt chocolate is a beast to get off of your cookware. So that really did not take long to melt down, about two minutes, maybe less. And to that, I want to add my sweetener. I have one cup of um, granular monk fruit. Granular monk fruit is one of my preferred sweeteners when I know I'm going to be cooking it because it has the most sugar-like taste without tasting like an artificial sweetener. And I got two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa. I'm going to whisk that in until it's all dissolved. Now this could take a few minutes, so you're going to get your arm workout in for today. I did go to the gym this morning and I did work my arms. So this is challenging for me today. This would take about three to five minutes, so just keep it moving so you don't burn it. All right, so it looks like this monk fruit has finally decided to dissolve. It's been about seven or eight minutes. That's the stuff with the, if you're using the granular over, say, one of the powders like the stevia, it will take a little bit longer to dissolve, but I just find the flavor a little bit more on point. All right, so I'm gonna leave that for a minute. I have a cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna add in. And at this point, I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit because I wanna bring this to a boil, but you gotta make sure you're stirring this constantly. All right, so keep whisking it in, get the heat up, and you wanna bring this to a boil. All right, so this has just started to boil, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat down to low. I'm gonna add in a pinch of pink Himalayan sea salt and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Give that a good stir in. Right, turn that off, remove it from the heat, and it is done. We need to let this cool off for a couple minutes before it's good to serve. So give it at least five minutes to rest. You don't want to burn anyone's mouth, especially if it's a little one. And also it'll thicken up a little bit more as it cools off. There we go. So let this rest for a few minutes. I'll be back to show you what it looks like. All right, guys and gals, so five minutes have passed, and it's just thickened up beautifully now. It's not too runny, it's not too thick, just like the perfect hot fudge. Now, don't judge me here, guys, because I do follow a little bit more a lazy keto, so I have some Breyers Carb Smart Vanilla Ice Cream. That's a treat I allow myself every once in a while. Here's Josephus on the top. Oh, that looks so good. Now guys, if you're a strict keto and you're like Briar's Carb Smart, no way I'm putting that in my body. Well, there are a ton of recipes for you to make your own vanilla ice cream. I have made my own in the past. I just haven't been very successful keeping it from turning rock hard in the freezer. So if you have some tips or tricks for me, don't forget to drop those down in the comments below so you can help a girl out here. But this is it guys. This is ooey gooey yummy goodness. Absolutely perfect hot fudge for my lazy keto treat. Mm. On point guys, you have to try this out. It is better than any hot fudge I bought from the store. And we can't forget, Land of Lakes has this sugar-free whipped cream. It is the only sugar-free whipped cream that I really love. And zero carbs, zero sugars. The only thing that you might or might not like in it, it does have 
sugar list listed as in less than 1% in the ingredients. So up to you guys how much you trust or not. It's the only sugar-free whipped cream I like. If you want to store this to use, you know, over the next week or two, get you know, a jar for the fridge, wait for this to cool off before you put it in there. And then I, you can use a funnel if you get a narrow mouth jar, but just pour it in and stick the lid on. The trick here is you want it to cool off but not get completely cool while it's in the saucepan because it thickens up a lot once it cools off. So I give it about, you know, 20 minutes or so and then transfer it out of the saucepan into the mason jar. Then just leave that sitting on the counter, you know, for a good couple hours and eventually I'll get around to putting it into the refrigerator. So I have probably a 16 ounce mason jar here and this filled it up right to the brim. Minus the couple of teaspoons that disappeared meanwhile. So I hope that gives you guys a good indication of how much sauce you're going to have out of this. And it spilled to the brim with still some left. And don't forget to label it so you know what it is and when you put it in. This will hold for, you know, 7 to 10 days in the fridge where nothing keto lasts very long, unfortunately, but it just gives us the opportunity to make more. Alright guys, that is it for our hot fudge video. This turned out absolutely wonderful. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up down below and share this video with email that you know can use a great low carb hot fudge recipe. Until next time guys, bye!